Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and in this video we're going to continue with a little more setup on our AI project before finally diving into it. I tried to do both the setup and some of the scripting all in one video, but the, the video ended up being way too long. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up some of our scripts so that we don't have to go back to them later. And we're going to set up a few helper functions in those scripts that we will use quite often. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So right now I've got my member, member config, and level script open here. As you'll remember from our last video, we did several updates to the level script, but we have a few more updates that we need to make. So let's go ahead and make those updates. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a members.add range and we're going to find objects of type. The type we want to find here is member obviously. And then we can just copy this line and paste it and we're going to change members to enemies and for the object type we're going to change that to enemy here. Okay, now let's go ahead and save that. The next thing I want to do on our level script is actually add one of the helper functions I was talking about earlier. So let's do that now. Okay, so what we can do here is we're going to create a public function that returns a list of type member. And we can just call this get neighbors. This needs to take in two parameters. It's going to take in a member that we can just call member. And it's going to take in a float that we can just call the radius. Basically what this function is going to do is, is that it's going to get all of the neighbors of a member inside of a given radius. So the first thing we want to do is create a list that we can return. So I'm going to create a new list here of type member. We can just call this neighbors found and we're going to set that equal to a new list of type member. Now the next thing we actually want to do is create a for each loop. So we're just very simply going to say for each and we're going to say for each other member in members and this members here is referencing the list that we've created up here and added members to here so for each of those members we are going to let me scroll down a little bit first off we're going to check and see if our other member is equal to member if it is equal to member then we're just going to continue and next we need to do a distance check so we're going to say if vector 3 dot distance we need to pass in two vectors here. So we're going to pass in our member.position and our other member.position. Now we need to compare it to something. So we're going to see, say if it is less than or equal to the passed in radius. And if it is, then we're just going to add this other member to our list of neighbors found. So we can just say neighbors found dot add other member. And finally, outside of our for loop, we need for each loop, we can just return the list of neighbors found. Okay, and this is a function we're going to use quite often in upcoming videos. So definitely write this down now and, and get it into your level script. Now let's actually go out to our member config script here. And inside of our member config script, we're going to have a lot of variables that we need to have access to. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add all of those variables now so that we don't have to come back to this script later. I know it might seem a little counterintuitive, but this will help to reduce the length of later videos. So we're going to go ahead and do it now. We're going to need basically a lot of public float variables here. So we're going to create a public float that we can just call our max FOV for field of view. And we can set this to an initial value of like 180. We're going to need another public float for our our max acceleration another public float here for our max velocity and now I'm going to create a comment here and just say wander variables and these are the variables that we need to have for our wandering functionality and for the wandering functionality we're going to need four public floats so we're going to need a public float for our wander jitter and I'm actually just going to copy public float here and just paste it we're going to need a wander radius also going to need a wander distance. And finally, for the wander variables, we're going to need a wander priority. Okay, very cool. Now we're going to add another comment, and we can just call this one our cohesion variables. And again, it's going to need public floats, but this one only needs two public floats. One is going to be our cohesion radius, and the other one is going to be our cohesion priority. Okay, another comment, and this one is going to be our alignment variables two public floats again the first one we're good we are just going to call our alignment radius another public float for our alignment priority okay one more comment separation variables and again two public floats separation radius and a separation priority oh we do need one more one more comment here and we will call this our avoidance variables and of course we're going to need two public floats we're going to need an avoidance radius and another public 
float for our avoidance priority. Okay, very cool. Now that should do it for the variables that we will need throughout this series. You know, we don't need to have any more variables here, which is very cool. We'll just have to remember what we called them a little later on in some of the other videos. But don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through those so that we shouldn't have any misnamed variables. Now let's go ahead and save this. And now let's go to our member script here. And we're gonna do a little bit of startup in this function as well. So in this script, we're gonna to have to add several variables up at the top as well. We're gonna add a public vector three. We're gonna need three vector threes for this script. We're gonna need a position. Let me just copy public vector three here. Whoops. Now I'm just gonna paste it twice. And we're gonna need a position, a velocity, and an acceleration. Okay, cool. Now we're also going to need a public reference for our level that we can just call level and we're gonna need a public reference for our member config that we can just name CONF or conf, however you feel like naming it. Okay, now let's go down a little bit and we're gonna add a start function to this script. You probably already have one and we're just going to do some initialization. So we're gonna set up our level is equal to find object of type. The type is going to be level of course and I can just copy this, paste it because we're also going to need our conf. We're going to set comp is equal to find object of type member config. We also need to set up our initial position. So we're going to say position is equal to transform dot position. And we're going to need to update our velocity. So we're going to set our velocity is equal to a new vector three. And we can just set it to a random dot range here between let's say negative three three and let's copy this random dot range here and let's just paste it for the y we're going to pass a zero for the z because we're in 2d okay and as i said at the start of this video we are going to add a few helper functions that we're going to need later on so let's go ahead and get started on those now the first helper function that we're going to create is a void we can just call this one wrap around we are going to need three parameters so we're going to pass in a reference vector three that we can call vector we're gonna need a float min and a float max. Now, before we fill out this helper function, we're going to actually create another one. We're gonna create one that returns a float and we're gonna call this wrap around float. This one is also gonna take in three parameters. It's gonna take in a float value, a float min and a float max. Okay, very cool. Now let's go ahead and fill out our wraparound function before coming back to the wraparound float. So our wraparound function is just going to say vector dot x is equal to wrap around float and for this we're going to pass in our vector dot x the min and the max okay now we can copy this paste it twice and we're just going to replace x with y and now we can repeat replace x with z okay now inside of our wrap around float function we just need to do some if checks so we're going to say if our value is greater than our max then we're going to set the value equal to the min else if our value is less than the min then we're going to set our value equal to the max and finally we're just going to return value here so basically what these two functions do is if an object is moving too far to the right and goes outside of the established bounds then it will wrap around to the left side of the screen if it's going too far in the y or too too far up the screen then once it goes over the bounds, it will move back down to the bottom of the screen. Okay, now I do wanna create one more helper function that we're going to need, and it's just going to return a float, and we can call this one random binomial. Okay, this one doesn't need any parameters, and it's very simple. We're just gonna return a random dot range between 0f and 1f, subtracted by a random dot range between 0f and 1f. Make sure we add our semicolon here. And that's gonna do it for the helper functions. Okay, now that is actually gonna do it for this video. This was just building a little more on top of the project we already have. In our next video, we are going to introduce our wandering behavior and get that working in our scene. But as I said, that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching.